Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to return to Munich and of course this is the Oktoberfest time. We've actually got the Oktoberfest beers here in Sweden but for this one we're going to do a pretty one of the more interesting Oktoberfest beers actually. So this one is the Hofbräu Oktoberfest beer from Hofbräu München and these guys are quite interesting because they were linked to the royal family quite a while ago and of course the, the Bavarian royal family were the ones who really started the Oktoberfest beer, so Hofbräu are the ones who have the strongest links to that. But as always with my beer reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery, and of course I'll tell you a bit about the Oktoberfest history because of the strong links of this brewery to Oktoberfest. But if you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. The brewery website, the links to my future reviews that I'll do from Hofbräu, because this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers, surprisingly. Um, but there's also the link down there to my Facebook page for the channel so please like it and also the untapped profile and feel free to add me as a friend there as well always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos so please do feel free to connect in whatever way you like but anyway to tell you about Hofbräu München so Hofbräu was founded in the year 1589 by Wilhelm IV the Duke of Bavaria but he didn't much like the beer that was already brewed in Munich and so two of his advisors recommended that he actually start his own brewery so he loved this idea but for this task he hired brewmaster Heimerin Pongratz of the Geisenfeld Monastery and he was to plan, build and then be the first brewmaster at this brewery. So Wilhelm's son Maximilian I was more of a fan of Weissbeer in comparison to the brown beers that were popular at the time. So in 1602 he banned all other breweries from brewing this style of beer and it essentially created a kind of monopoly for his ducal brewery. So the Weissbeers proved very popular so the brewery had to actually relocate in the year 1607 to the Pratzel and in 1610 10, sales were permitted of the Hofbräu beers in other private businesses around Munich. And this, the, the Hofbräu München, they do have a good reputation for their vice beers because of this monopoly of Maximilian I. But Pongratz's successor as brewmaster, Elias Pichler, he actually created the first Maibock in 1614 and this was using the Einbeck brewing method which is apparently quite famous these days. But apparently this Maibock beer saved the, it was used to pay the Swedish army. They got 344 pails of this beer during the 30 years war and this stopped the Swedish army from plundering the city of Munich so you can actually say that a beer managed to save the city of Munich which is quite funny actually but in the year 1810 King Maximilian I Joseph he threw a huge wedding party for his son Ludwig and his wife Teresa and this included a huge feast and beer taverns with specially brewed beers and this was what was went on to become the famous Oktoberfest because they decided that it was to be repeated every year. So in 1828 Hofbräu opened their first tavern, their first kind of private company if you like, but Ludwig apparently kept a very close eye on the price of the beers and this was essentially so that all citizens could enjoy the beer and they said that, uh, that Ludwig was really quite a, a philanthropist if you like, so he wanted all citizens to be included in society. But because the beer was so popular the company had to officially register their logos as trademarks in 1879 and this was because so many people were, were kind of making logos very very similar to Hofbräu so they decided to, to kind of copyright it if you like. But in 1896 the brewery had to expand so a new brewery was to be built above the storage cellars on Irene Weinestrasse and the old building on the Platzl became the first Hofbräu house opening officially in September of 1897. So during the Second World War the brewery suffered heavy damage and so only a small part of it was still in working order in 1945 although several of the tankards had survived after being safely stored. I think they stored them in the basement so they survived a lot of the bombing raids but Oktoberfest took place for the first time after the war in 1949 and in 1950 it was actually quite a, a historic moment for Hofbräu because this was the first time that the mayor of Munich actually tapped the first keg of beer at the festival and this was also the first time that the Hofbräu beers were in the opening keg. Usually it was the Spaten beers but there was a dispute over the price of the Spaten beer so Hofbräu were the new brewery chosen for the kind of official keg ceremony or the official tapping ceremony as they call it. But over the following years the building on the Platzl was restored by Valentin Emmert and this was completed in 1958 in time for the 800th anniversary celebrations of the city of Munich. But in 1972 they inaugurated their famous 50,000 square foot tent at the Munich Beer Festival and then in 1988 they built a new 
brewery outside of the city, which is still their home today. And originally, this brewery was producing 6.6 .6 million gallons of beer per year. And this was later extended again a bit later in 1995. And of course, in 1997, the original Hofbräuhaus House celebrated its 100th anniversary. But over the next few years, the many Hofbräuhaus House locations popped up across the world. There's quite a few in America these days. There's one in Hong Kong, and I believe there's a couple of others all over the place too. Check out the brewery website if you want to know more about that. But the brewery continues to expand, and the original Hofbräuhaus, House, like I said, celebrated its 100th birthday in 1997. And the original site is also home to, this original site is home to the famous statue of Julius the Brewer, which was produced in 1897, but it was destroyed during the Second World War, although they, they commissioned to celebrate one of the anniversaries they commissioned a kind of um, a replica to be produced and this returned to the brewery in 2008 as part of the celebrations for the 400 years of beer culture on the Platzl Square and that's somewhere if you do go to Munich you really need to visit and that's where I'm, I'm definitely going to go there the next time I go to Munich because I never I never did it last time because I was too young to drink beer I was only 14 or something like that so I couldn't go and enjoy all the beers but now that I'm an old man I can definitely go but anyway that's your kind of brief history of Hofboy Munich I hope you enjoyed it. I, I quite enjoyed researching that one because these are the guys who were really linked to the, the starting of Oktoberfest. But just to list the other beers you can get from Hofbräu München, you get the original, which is the Munich Helles beer, the Dunkel beer, which is a dark lager, the Weiss beer, the Schwarz Weiss, which I think really is similar to a Dunkel Weiss. Um, there's also the Maibock, as I told you, quite a famous style, the one that saved the city of Munich. There's the Münchner Sommer, which is the, uh, the summer beer, and also the Oktoberfest beer as well. So it's quite a small range from Hofbräu in comparison to some of the other Munich breweries, but the beers are supposed to be very good. As I say, I've never tried them before, but very much looking forward to getting stuck into this one. So let's get the camera up and we'll have a little look at the artwork before we open this one up. So this one is a 6.3% Oktoberfest beer, as you would expect. You can see the people there celebrating Oktoberfest. All of the Hofbräu beers, incidentally, have this kind of uh, label art on them. I think it's just different colours depending on the beer, and of course this design in here is a bit different as well. But because of the brewery's ties with the, the royal family, the old Bavarian royal family, this is why you have the crown as the Hofbräu symbol, and this is also on the bottle cap as well. So as I say, this guy is a 6.3% Oktoberfest Merzen, so without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. Very much looking forward to it. As you can see, a nice smoky opening there. If I hold it up, you can see it a little bit. I actually don't have a, a German half litre tanker yet, so I need to invest in one of those. I've not bought one of them since I arrived in Sweden, and I always get German viewers comment on my videos, you're not using the right glass and things like that. But unfortunately, I usually I would use a German tanker, but I actually just don't have one this time. Germans are very particular about the glass that you drink your beer out of, but really, it doesn't actually make much difference to the flavour. It just kind of affects the head formation. But yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a really kind of bright golden yellow colour. I'll just put the light over, let the camera see that, but that's very, very bright. But as you can see, the beer is clear. This is exactly what you would expect from a, the kind of colour of a an Oktoberfest beer. Usually they can be a bit more orange than this, but looks perfect. Looks really nice and crystal clear. As you can see, it is transparent if I put my fingers behind it. There was a finger of a frothy white head. There are some big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But overall, this beer looks really, really nice. So let's have a look at the aroma of this guy before we get stuck in. So as you would expect from the Oktoberfest beer, especially the Oktoberfest Merzen, you've got a nice kind of bready malt base to it. Bit of sweet kind of biscuity and grainy character in there. A bit of a kind of a dark, slightly darker caramel coming out as well, but mainly a bready and biscuity character from the malt base. Smells really nice, but you've got these typical German noble hop characteristics coming out as well. And of course, this is the kind of floral, aromatic character, and you've got a bit of a smoother grassiness as well. Maybe even just a little bit of earthy character coming out, but you can definitely, it's a very simple aroma. The German beers I've always found do have, apart from the Doppelbox and the, the Rauf beers and things like that, the lighter German beers always have quite a simple aroma, but they always taste great. A lot of people always want like a huge aroma on a beer for it, and they say that that's really an indicator of it tasting great, but I don't agree with that really. I think German beers, especially the lighter ones, kind of smell a bit simpler but they taste beautiful anyway so 
Yeah, but as I say, typical malt base there, nice bready malts, a bit of sweeter biscuit and some caramel, a bit of grainy character coming out too, but those German noble hops in this one shining through. Nice floral aromatic and grassy character coming out. Maybe even a little bit of earthiness, but yeah, smells really nice. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. So this is the Hofbräu Oktoberfest beer from Hofbräu München. Prost! Yeah, really nice actually. I think on first taste, it is more forward in the malt. And as I say, just shugle the beer around in your mouth and let your palate adjust completely to it. But there's a nice sweet malt base in there, as I was saying. You've got a bready characteristic that just blankets the middle of your tongue. And on top of that, you've got a bit of a sweeter caramel and some biscuity characteristics coming out too. Yeah, as your palate adjusts it a bit more, the hops come out nicely and I think it's there's a good aromatic and floral dryness. I think it's more aromatic than floral right enough. But the aromatic flavours come out around the very front curve of your tongue there. Mm. But as always with these Oktoberfest beers, they're really well balanced. And you can if you go and taste a regular sort of Munich Helles beer or something like that, you can actually taste that these are a bit more boozy. You can taste it in the malt base. There's a bit more of that kind of darker boozy caramel coming out of these beers in comparison with the other uh, lighter regular beers. Hmm. My German flatmate told me that the the actual Oktoberfest beers are up there about 10%. Um, and that's just so that they get people drunk fast so that they move on and lots of people can experience the Oktoberfest. But I didn't realise, I thought these were the regular strength ones, but this 6.3% is about the same as a kind of American IPA. Mm. But yeah, as I was saying, malt base on this is really nice. It comes out, it, as you go through the beer, it progresses a little bit more. As I say, a nice kind of bready malt base. You've got a sweet kind of caramel character. So it's a bit more like a biscuity, syrupy character. And, and, and in comparison with other ones, it spreads all across the middle of the palate. It doesn't just go right down the middle. You've got a nice, sweet, caramelly, biscuity, syrupy bread in there. It's, it's really nice. The malt base on this one is, is definitely kind of really up there. I do enjoy a big, bready, German-style beer. And this one really hits the spot for me. Mm. But around the edges of the palate where you're expecting these hoppy characteristics, it's a nice smooth grassiness on the sides of the tongue. But as you move round towards the front of the palate, you're getting more of those aromatic -y. It's not even spicy, but you're just getting a bit more of a kind of florally, aromatic, dry character coming out of the beer. Those typical German noble hops. This beer is actually quite well hopped, I think. I want to say in the back corners of the palate too, there is just a little touch of earthy character, but it's really smooth and actually quite sweet. But this beer is really quite nice. So I would recommend, if you haven't tried any of the Hofbräu beers or any of the Oktoberfest beers, this is a good one. All of the Oktoberfest beers are good, incidentally. I really enjoy all of them. But I'm quite impressed with my first taste of a Hofbräu beer, so I need to go and review the other ones for you. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say light to mid-bodied, smooth carbonation on this. It comes in with a little bit of an attack, and that's just to help bring out the hoppy characters. The, the carbonation really helps bring out that transition from the sweeter part of the malt base into the hoppier elements of the flavour. So really quite nice. In term, It's also a bit oily too, and that helps bring out the sort of caramelly and, uh, and sort of sir biscuity syrupy flavours that are in the, the malt base in this beer too. As I say, quite sweet and malty, but there's also a good dry and kind of bitter character to it as well. The bitterness is really around the front edge of the tongue and that's where the more aromatic characteristics of the hops come out. But overall, this is a really nice beer and it's been really cool to do my first review from Hofbräu München. I always enjoy reviewing the Munich beers because there's so much history in that city and it's somewhere that I really need to go and visit again now that I'm old enough to actually enjoy the beer. So I'm definitely going to go back there at some point soon. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really cool to do another one from a German brewery and especially a new German brewery but at the same time quite a famous one. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the history section of this video too because that's this is one of the more interesting ones I've done. But I thank you for watching my beer videos. As always, if you do happen to have tried the beer, please let me know your own thoughts on it in the section below. 
Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. To my German viewers, please suggest some other German beers for me to have a look at. Always willing to try new ones. But I thank you for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I do have two more Oktoberfest beers to review for you, so stay tuned for that. Please subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're enjoying the reviews. Slanja just now.